Richard. And I'm Gary. And these are our incredible stories. Tonight, let's celebrate uh, the pets we have loved and who have enriched our lives. I can't think, Gary, of a, a better topic to start off the month of December, which for us is the month of Christmas. That's true. That's very true. And uh, the, uh, the fellow who comes to mind uh, uh, most often with me who loved animals, especially cats, was a writer by the name of Cleveland Amory. And in his first book, uh, he told an incredible true story about how a little cat came into his life. And we're going to end our broadcast tonight with a, with a short excerpt from his book. We know from uh, reading Cleveland Amory's book, which was called The Cat Who Came for Christmas, that it was Christmas Eve and the snow was falling in New York City. Cleveland Amory was walking home from work, and he was bundled up to ward off the bitter cold, and he spotted something in a snow-covered alley close to his home. What did he spot? Well, it was a cat, but it was dirty. Uh, He couldn't really tell what color it was. It was hungry, it was sick, and Gary, it appeared injured. Most people would have taken one glance at the cat and moved along. And Amory, of all people, he describes himself as a curmudgeon. This is a grumpy person. (laughs) I'm aware of quite a few curmudgeons. (laughs) Yes, well, he's the last person in the world who you would expect would take an interest in this poor, desperate cat. Uh, Like Cleveland Amory himself said, uh, when it comes to Merry Christmas, he he has a hard time uh, uttering the word Merry because Merry is not a word in his vocabulary. How about Bah Humbug? Yeah, that's more like it. But anyways, there it was, a desperate little animal struggling to survive on this Christmas Eve. And somehow, Gary, that little animal spoke to Cleveland Amory's heart. He took that little cat home. He nursed him back to health, and he named him P-Bear. P-Bear? P-Bear. The initial P, Bear. What, what did the P stand for? I don't know. P-Bear became the subject of three of his very successful books, and Cleveland Amory reminds us, all of us, that little animals can truly enrich our lives. And so in the month of December, again for us, the month of Christmas, and for many around the world— They have celebrations just as important to them as we have ourselves. Um, I think it's important to know how and why our lives can be enriched. So let's start off and let's, from our own experience, learn about a few of the cats who have made a difference in our life. And then we're going to end with, in his own words, Cleveland Amory's a short description of what happened on that Christmas Eve so very long ago. Okay. Well, to start this off, I have to say, um, in the beginning, uh, our family, and you know what I'm talking about, has always been a dog family. And there's a lot of enrichment that dogs bring to a person's life, a lot of love and devotion. Um, Loyalty of a dog. uh, Everybody knows this. And I had never had a cat. And I remember right around college, um, I had been looking for a new pet, and I was interested in getting a cat just to have the experience of being a cat owner. And so I remember one of one of our first cats, uh, her name was Bandit, and Bandit was a unique cat. She had been let out by her owners, um, not really sure who they were. But she was a snowshoe Siamese, and she ended up on my windowsill. And it was just after November. We're getting into December, which is kind of interesting because most of my my cats uh, I got around that time. So this is kind of an appropriate uh, subject that we're we're talking about right now. But she had uh, climbed on my 
uh, windowsill outside of my window when I was going to bed, and I saw her out there, and uh, it was it was a little chilly outside, uh, but I wasn't sure if she was a feral cat or or what, but uh, she she slept there all night long, and in the morning she was still there, and I said, you know what, you look like you need a warm place to stay. And so I, I brought her in on the porch, and she was very gentle, and I gave her some food. And uh, it was instantaneous, uh, truly love at first sight. And so I adopted Bandit, made her my own, and brought her into my life. And she was just an absolute joy. She rode her on my shoulder everywhere I went. She knew how to open up the doors to the bedroom and to the bathrooms, which quite frankly, can be quite embarrassing when your cat knows how to open up your bathroom door. But she was a fantastic little animal, and I got to have her for a very good um, 11 years. She was already um, a mature cat when I got her, so uh, she was probably around 19 or 20 when I lost her. But she she really brought a lot to my life. And another uh, one of the cats that uh, I do not have with me uh, anymore was... uh, Midnight, who was a uh, black cat that uh, found me and my wife when we were outside sitting on our driveway uh, talking to somebody one day, and she just kind of sauntered on over, very sassy, very sure of herself, and she was actually a a street cat that uh, one of the neighbors had been feeding, and uh, this neighbor had ended up having to uh, go to an assisted living home, so Midnight was not getting the food um, from that house anymore, and she was definitely looking for handouts. And so she she wasn't too sure of us in the beginning, uh, but once she began to trust us and she realized we were we were good people, and so we ended up taking her in. And uh, she had quite the personality, very vocal, uh, loved to tell us what to do and how to do it, and but very very caring little animal, and. She was uh, around when we got our third cat, uh, who we have right now, and currently he's uh, king of the house because he's the only cat we have right now, Um, Gizmo. And Gizmo, I think, uh, more than anything, deserves the majority of my time when I tell stories about our pet cats because Gizmo was an unexpected surprise. And everybody says when you get a cat, you don't find the cat, the cat finds you. And it has been true three times now. So uh, I had gone to Petco with my wife because it was November and her class was doing a little thing on, oh, I I take that, it wasn't November because we we officially gave his uh, birth date uh, 4-25-15. So that was uh, April 25th, 2015. So we got him in April. And uh, it was April, and we were going over to Petco to pick up some food for um, tadpoles because my wife's class was doing the life cycle. So 9.30 at night, she realized she needed tadpole food. And so we went over there. They were already closing up shop, and this family comes rushing in. And they have armfuls of kittens, and they're in a panic. Because they said they were visiting from Maryland and they were on the beach side when all of a sudden they saw something drop out of this SUV onto the road. And then the SUV took off. And it was seven little powder puff kittens. And they jumped out of their car being very kind people and grabbed up the kittens so that they wouldn't get hurt. Uh, And they brought them. They were looking for a vet, but there weren't any vets on the beach side that they could find. They weren't familiar with the area, so they found Petco had a a vet inside of the store. Um, So they brought them there, hoping that they would be able to get them in. Uh, Of course, it was all closed up, so they made an emergency call at the store to have somebody come in there, but they asked if they could please find somebody or a few people to foster these kittens and I looked at my wife and I said you know we already have a cat we have litter I mean it's a kitten we we know how to take care of cats can we take it 
And my wife was going, oh, I don't know. You know, we already have the one cat. Uh, I'm not sure. I said, no, 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 no. I, trust me. We could do this. It'll be great. We can, we can definitely do this. And there's this woman who had, at the time, to me it appeared like she had a, a look on her face of desperation. And she had this little tiny kitten that was small enough to fit in the palm of your hand. And I just remember her saying, take him. Take, take him. And once he landed in my wife's arms, oh, the little eyes, the face, the little mew, mew sound, you know. Oh, it melted her heart. And, of course, there, there was no way of saying no. Um, fast forward uh, to the next day, I ended up spending $756 instead of the $9 I was paying for tadpole food for a kitten uh, because the kitten gizmo uh, was so young. He was only, um, I think they said, five weeks old. So he wasn't old enough to be weaned off of his mother. So he still needed milk. He needed formula. And so we had to use a little tiny syringe to actually feed him by mouth. But let me tell you, this little booger, incredibly smart. He's a Tonkinese. And uh, I know there may not be a, a lot of cat professionals out there listening, but Tonkinese are a mixture of a Siamese and a Bombay, I believe. But he is a big boy but he's incredibly smart. Siamese are genuinely just smart cats. This little animal found out how to get out of every single little carrier or baby fence that we put up in his way. There was no way of containing this small little animal. He's like one of those velociraptors from Jurassic Park. He only needs to be in a, an environment for a few seconds, and he scans the perimeter. He looks for the weaknesses, and he knows how to escape. He is that smart. And I can't tell you how many times we came home finding our clothing all over the floor or toilet paper completely unspooled in a giant mound with this little tiny kitten sitting in the middle of it covered in shredded toilet paper. Oh, it, it was the most interesting uh, year and a half having a kitten because I had never raised a kitten before, but it was definitely an experience. But uh, now he's a lot more mature. He doesn't tear things up. Every once in a while, he likes to uh, knock things off. I don't know if it's just to mess with us or what. But uh, Or he'll climb up on his little cat perch that's above our bed, and he'll take a toy, and he'll drop it on top of us. And that's usually because he wants to play. And so that's the best way to get somebody's attention is to drop something on, on your head while you're trying to read a book or watch TV. I remember that night uh, that you brought Gizmo home. <clears throat> it broke my heart hearing about somebody th throwing that carton of kittens out their car window to the ground and just leaving them like that. It just broke my heart. Yeah, it was terrible. And uh, to have you bring one of these little uh, helpless little animals home and, and raise him to the uh, happy little guy that he is today uh, is, is in itself an in incredible story and a story of love. Oh, absolutely. I like to think so. Mm -hmm. um, my faithful companion for 15 years, uh, up until this past January, was Leo. And uh, he was about two or three years old when uh, I found him in the, uh, with a, an adoption group in a pet store. And I took him home, and every day he greeted me at the front door when I came home from work. Um, I was used to Leo come running and, and uh, saying, welcome back home. He slept near my head at, uh, in bed every night, and uh, he slept between my feet and legs when I was lounging around during the daytime. He loved his cat treats. Um, I always got a hearty meow from him uh, when he saw me heading for the larder to get a, a cat treat. And for many years, Gary, uh, as you know, he enjoyed playing with his ostrich feather. I mean, you'd have him circling around that rug at lightning speed, uh, with the ostrich feather. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Now, in his older years, uh, Leo developed a thyroid problem. Uh, he began to lose weight, and he grew thinner and thinner and thinner, and we had to put him on permanent thyroid medication, which extended his life and his quality of life. But he no longer exhibited the energy of a young cat in his older years, and I would frequently tell him that uh, we were growing old together. Then, um, on his last day, which was January 20th of last year, uh, I came home from Walmart with lots of moist cat treats for him because he hadn't been eating much at all, and I wanted to see if I could fatten him up a little bit. 
And he was in the kitchen when I walked in, and when he saw me, he walked toward me sideways. And that's when I knew uh, that um, his time had come. So Leo then made his last trip to the vet, and the vet was surprised that he had lasted as long as he did. Uh, it was love and affection between the both of us that kept both of us going. Absolutely. So um, I'm sad that I've lost Leo, but like you, I have some absolutely incredible memories that will be with me for a lifetime, and these memories can only come from the unconditional love that we experience from animals, especially our cats. Absolutely. And to be honest with you, it doesn't matter if you have a dog, cat, rat, hamster, gerbil, bird. It doesn't matter. They're all important. They're all important. And, And the thing is... All of you listening can understand when I say that uh, a pet becomes a member of the family. And they're not just an animal. They are a family member. And they grow so much in your heart that it's hard when you do lose them. But like you said, uh, we can appreciate the memories and the, the time that we share with them, the joy and enrichment that they bring to our lives. And they've actually done studies worldwide um, showing how much a pet can affect your mental and physical health and how uh, animals can affect the, the health and the well-being of persons with disabilities, um, how they're used to help uh, people who are on the spectrum uh, with bringing out their personality and, and helping them um, adjust to the world around them. So animals have been put here for a purpose, and, and they serve that purpose very well. And we're lucky that we get to have them in our lives for the time that we do have them. I agree 100%. And now as we listen to an age-old favorite Christmas carol played on guitar the way it was hundreds of years ago in Oberndorf, Austria, we're going to close our holiday trip down memory lane as we've been remembering our beloved pets with an excerpt from Cleveland Amory's really delightful book, The Cat Who Came for Christmas. For anyone who has ever been owned by a cat, it will come as no surprise that there are all sorts of things about your cat you'll never, as long as you live, forget. Not the least of these is your first sight of him or her. That my first sight of mine would ever be memorable seemed at the time highly improbable. For one thing, I could hardly see him at all. It was snowing, and he was standing some distance from me in a New York City alley. For another thing, what I did see of him was extremely unprepossessing. He was dirty, and he was hurt. The irony is that everything around him to accept him was beautiful. It was Christmas Eve, and although no one outside of New York would believe it, New York City can be beautiful, and that Christmas Eve some years ago was one of those times. It was hardly going to be for me a Merry Christmas. I'm no Scrooge, but I am a curmudgeon. And the word merry is not in the vocabulary of any self-respecting curmudgeon on Christmas or any other day. You'd be better off with a New York cab driver or even a Yankee fan. I had not a single creature to call my own. For an animal person, an animalless home is no home at all. Well, it turned out that Cleveland Amory's Christmas cat was Snow White. He nursed his little furry friend back to health, and he named him Pea Bear. For Cleveland Amory, Pea Bear was the best Christmas present ever. Pea Bear appears in three of Amory's very successful books, The Cat and the Curmudgeon, The Best Cat Ever, and of course, The Cat Who Came for Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. Take care of yourselves and any animals who are enriching your lives. Once again, I'm Richard. And I'm Gary. And this was our incredible story. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays.